I guess research started at. I talked to a coach in a cat in a camp, and they were telling me that it's good to have、um, options at every level. So, especially coming from Guam, maybe D one is very difficult because a coach wants to see you play in person, and if you're not, if your film is not good, then. It's very difficult for them to scout you because why would they risk? Because it's Division One, and why would they risk a player they don't know or ever seen to come to their school and maybe receive scholarship? So, what he told me was have a school at each division. So, Division One, Division Two, Division Three, to NAIA, to whatever league you're willing to play at. So,、um, my The how I started researching schools, I guess, first started with my knowledge of which schools I wanted to go to, not for soccer, but for education. And I searched up some schools I wanted to go to, and then I put it on a list. I put it. I have a notebook, my soccer journal, and I guess I put it on a list. And then I、um, organized it: Division One, Division Two, Division Three. And then、um, I also talked to a lot of Matau players because some of them play in the U.S. and they went to college in the U.S. and they told me about some schools. And then、um, I also talked to some players in the states where I was playing MPSL and, and PDL, and they're telling me about their schools, their experiences, and what they enjoyed at their school, what they didn't, what they enjoyed at another school. So it's I guess I. Learn these things through experience and my own research, and I just researched a lot of schools. And coming from、um, personally, I wasn't, I didn't care where I went, what part of the country. I, I just wanted to get out there and play soccer and、uh, get education at the highest level I could. So I searched up all the schools, every single school. I went on the top, the. Rankings of NCAA Division One, NCAA Division Two, NCAA Division Three, and I went to I searched up schools in the West Coast, the East Coast, the Midwest, and just started writing them down, writing their con the coaches' contact information, and looked at their roster, because in the states there's different styles of play. I'm not that big. I'm not six foot three. I'm not 180 pounds.、Um, So I try to find rosters where the size of the the players aren't too big, where maybe it might fit my style of play. Then I'd watch a little bit of film from their team if I I would enjoy playing with them, and then I'd I'd try to find someone that might know that team to、uh, find out a little bit about that school from a personal experience. And、um, so I I made a list. So I made a list each division, and then I just started shooting emails.、Um, I made a draft email, but I made it specific, so people don't know.、Um, general emails are good and bad, so you want to kind of add a twist to it. So maybe you start off with,、um, "Hi, coach, blah blah blah.、Uh, congratulations on your win this weekend.、Um, looking forward to your game against another team. Like change it up. Be like, for example."、Um, My school,、um, my school,、uh, Central Connecticut.、Um, Jordan Durst,、uh, Sean Nicola. They went to university.、Uh, Sean Nicola went to University of Connecticut.、Uh, Jordan Durst went to Hartford, which is Central Connecticut's rival school.、Um, I added a twist in my email saying,、um, "Hi, blah blah blah. Congratulations on your win against blah blah. blah.、Uh, looking forward to your game against blah."、Um, I heard great things from. Jordan Durs from Sean Nicola that Central Connecticut is a great school and they have a great program.、Um, I heard that the area is very nice and I continued my general email from there. So you add a twist, maybe someone that you know in the area or some some little twist, and then、um, also what I just said, finding out how the places. Because since we're from Guam, we're not going to be able to like go to each school we want to. So maybe someone, an auntie or family member that lives near that school, asking them how it is, how the culture is, how life is there, how the weather is, because、uh, Connecticut was snowing last week, and、um, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so, just finding out how it is, 
not just your soccer life, but how your social life is going to be because you're not playing soccer 24-7 there. You're also a college student, a college, um, college student. So, and um, yeah, so I just researched my schools, made a list, um, shot emails. So as a kid, my, my parents weren't strict academically, but they kind of set a standard where if you're not doing good in school, you're not going to play soccer. So as a kid, I've always just did my homework. I wasn't an all-A student. I was never an all-A student. I just I always did my homework. I studied for tests. And academics are very important, super important. Because if a coach knows that you're academically sound and you could get academic scholarship, then they don't have to worry about you. They don't have to worry about you failing a class and not being eligible to play that year or that season for the team. So academics are extremely important because a college coach wants student athletes, not just an athlete. They want someone that will be good on and off the pitch. And um, I, I was always, I always kept my grades up. Um, and it, it helped because now I'm getting some merit-based scholarship, some um, a dean scholarship. I got some academic scholarship and it helps with finance because at the end of the day, some decisions that are going to be key to your college um, decisions are going to be location or most importantly, finance, location, um, social life, academics. I'm pretty sure parents are financially they're going to be um, always worried and um, if you could help them out by getting an uh, academic scholarship it would it would help and yeah coaches always look for good academics because they don't want to find a kid that's not doing well in school and they have to do extra work to get them to the school or they have to give them a tutor or it's, it's just harder work make it easy for yourself and get good grades and play sports or play do well in sports so there's so there's a thing like there's a saying you'll get a hundred no's before you'll get a yes and I've had experience with the trial with trials trials in uh, particular so in Columbus crew um, my trial for their, I tried out for their under 14 academy, developmental academy, and um, I was very happy to have made that trial, but I went, I went in very uh, hesitant and kind of afraid, I guess, and I didn't do particularly well the first day, uh, didn't stand out. Um, second day, I, I did well, I had a goal, I scored a goal, um, did, had a good trial. The third day, I, I did average. And at the end of the trial, I was very nervous. The coach went up to me, and then he told me that just, um, I wasn't good enough. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't the player, I wasn't a player that would make it up the ranks and um, would go pro with their academy. And as a 14-year-old, that really hurts, you know? The airplane ride home was very, um, very sad too. I was at that point I, that was the first time I've ever felt that I, w I didn't want to play soccer and I was very like disappointed in myself and I, I kind of wanted to quit soccer but my uncle helped me get back into playing soccer again and he really encouraged me and he really uh, he, he was really like encouraging and he really helped me during that time and also um, another time I tried was FC Dallas this time um I was prepared, I came in prepared. I didn't want to have the same regret as I had in my Columbus Crew trial. Came in super prepared, came in a week before my trial, ran a lot, got myself acclimated to the climate because it's very dry in uh, Texas. Um, did many little things I didn't do in my other trial. First day, um, I scored a goal, um, good game, I played a good game. Um, second day, I, I, I did well. Third day, we had another scrimmage. I had an assist. Actually, my, my first day, I had two goals. And my third day, I had an assist 
very good game um and then that was i was doing a three-day trial again and i told my coach or my coach asked me and now he's the head coach for the fc dallas team the main team um he told me he asked me if i could stay another day to do another tri uh, trial again even though it was a three-day trial and my flight was on the fourth day that night and we weren't supposed to trial or the afternoon but i told my dad i wanted to do it and then um i tried i did another trial for the fourth day and then um my flight was in like three hours and i had to leave after the trial and the coach asked me again if i could stay another day to try out but i told him our flight was in four hours and i had to leave and he told me that he would let me he he told me that he would told me that he would let me know what his decision was. He told me that I was a little bit better than their local player, but not good enough where they would want to replace me for their local player, which they invested a lot of time. So I basically got another no. So second no in two years, and um, I was very sad, but I came out with no regrets. Or I, I played very well that trial. That was the best I've ever played. Um, when I was doing trials, and I was I was happy with what I what I did. I wasn't regretful. I was actually glad that I I did that because I played very well. And sometimes it's not in your hands. Sometimes you're just unlucky, and sometimes the coach just they just um, they're thinking differently. And he said no, which is fine. Then I I did a third trial at San Jose Earthquakes. This was an open trial. So anyone could go, anyone who signed up online could go. So there was a few kids, a lot actually. And it was a two day trial. And actually I, I was playing well and um, the final day comes and they're announcing who made the trial. Um, and uh, my number was called on my jersey. And I think it was like 192. My number was called in my jersey, and I made, uh, I got selected in my trial, and that was such a good feeling, because um, I, I, I finally, I got a yes. So after like two hard no's and other countless no's, I, I finally got a yes, and that felt so good. And sadly, I didn't, I wasn't able to move because of other things, but I got a yes. That's all that mattered to me, and I called my mom and I cried and I said. I finally got a yes, and also in their and it could it's the same thing as the recruitment process where many kids might get discouraged from not getting a reply. I've sent hundred plus emails, maybe got only twenty some thirty some replies. I got so many no's. I know a lot of coaches didn't read or get back to my message, or they got back to my message saying a super generic general answer. That sounds like they just copied and pasted, which kind of made me mad. But, you know, coaches are looking at email, 1,000 emails a day. What can you do about it? So um, you'll get no's, but it's important to keep on, keep on sending, keep on sending, keep on. Don't get discouraged because, like I said, for 100 no's, you'll get a yes. And that yes will be worth it.